electrostatic force or Coulomb's force. Electrostatics is a branch of physics that studies electric charges at rest. Electrostatic force is an attractive and repulsive force between particles that are caused due to their electric charges. An electric force between two stationary charged body. It is also referred to as Coulomb's force. Coulomb's law is an experimental law of physics that quantifies the amount of force between two stationary and electrically charged particles. So we have an example of electrostatic phenomena. Attraction of the plastic wrap to one's hand after it is removed from a package to the apparently spontaneous explosion of grain silos. Damage of electronic components during manufacturing. And of course, photocopier and laser printer operation. So we have the Coulomb's law, where electrostatic force is equal to Coulomb constant times charge 1 and charge 2 over their distance of separation. So this is how it looks like. So the unit for our electrostatic force is Newton and our column constant is equal to 9.0 times 10 raised to 9 Newton times meter squared over column squared. Now let's try to solve some problems. So we have a right triangle here with three different charges. So what we're going to do is to find the direction, magnitude, and resultant force on Q3. So we have the given values here. So we have the column constant, which is K is equal to 9 times 10 raised to 9 Newton meter squared over column squared. And we have the charge 1, 2, and 3. So because it is given as micro column, so we need to convert it in columns. So as a result, we have charge 1, 50 times 10 raised to negative 6 columns, charge 2, 75 times 10 raised to negative 6 columns, and charge 3, we have 65 times 10 raised to negative 6 columns. And we have the distance separation between charge 3 and 1. So we have 37 cm. So we need to have it in meter. So we did convert it. So we have 0 0.37 meter. And from the distance from 2 to 3, we have 74 cm. Convert it to meter. So we have 0 0.74 meter. And from 1 to 2, we have 64 cm. So we convert it. So we have 0 0.64 meter. So now, we need to know its direction based on its charges if they would repel or attract. So on Q3 from Q1, we have different charges. We have a positive and negative charge. So they will attract and will point directly towards the negative y-axis. And on Q3 from Q2, we have the same charges. We have both positive charges. So it will repel and will go opposite from Q2 and Q3. So this is how it will going to look like. Now let's proceed to solving its magnitude. So we have the electric force on 3 from 1. So we have the column constant multiplied by the charge 3 then multiplied by the charge 1 all over the distance separation between 3 and 1. So we have F on 3 from 1 is equal to 214 Newton. And then we have the F on 3 from 2 is equal to 80 Newton. So, so now we know the direction and magnitude of two forces. So let's proceed. So to have a clearer look, we have like this. So we need to decompose this vector to its X and Y components. So we know that F31 is equal to 240 Newton and F32 is equal to 80 Newton. F31 directly points to negative y axis, so it doesn't have any x component. So let's go to F32. F32 has x and y components, so we have F32x and then F32y. So using the trigonometric function, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we have the theta here is equal to 60. So for our x component, we have F32x is equal to sine theta times F32. So we have it sine because our F32x is opposite to our theta. So we have F32x is equal to 69 Newton. We have F32y, so is equal to cosine theta times F32. It's cosine because 
it is adjacent to our theta. So we have our F32Y is equal to 40 Newton. So because we have two values in our Y axis, which is the 240 Newton and the 40 Newton. So we need to subtract the two and now we have a 174 Newton. So to have a much clearer look, we have like this. So an Fx of 69 Newton and Fy is equal to 174 Newton. So to find the theta of our resultant force, so we need to use the trigonometric function. So we have tangent of theta is equal to Fy over Fx. So we have tangent of theta is equal to 2.52. So inverse tangent of 2.52 is equal to 68 degrees below the negative x-axis. So plus 180 degrees, so we have 248 degrees located in quadrant 3. Using the head-to-tail method, we got this image. Now to find the resultant force, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So we have c is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared. So we have c is equal to square root of 69 squared plus 174 squared is equal to 187 newton. So now we have our resultant force equal to 187 newton. So I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.